you got all kind of stuff. People beating up people for commissary. You got people uh, beating up people for their tennis shoes. You got people just just sodomizing people. Just you know, just going rambunctious. Someone comes in and, and is kind of scared or hesitant and stuff like that, shy, you know, he's going to get turned out. You know, chances are real high, you know, that you're going to get turned out. You're going to get turned out. They rape him, you know, go in there and rape him, you know, and guys sometimes, you know, commit suicide because of that. To all my family that I ever knew, I can't live life being mistreated, lied and stolen from, and most of all being hurt. I most of all mean being behind bars when I say being hurt. We had about a two minute long conversation. And he was crying on the phone. And he said, Mom, I'm emotionally and mentally destroyed. And that's the last time I really ever heard his voice. The physical exam in the records did document that. There were tears in the anus at certain times. They usually call it at 10 o'clock or 2 o'clock, given as a diagram of a clock. Even though it was documented, it was just covered over of it as if it never happened. I have found forgiveness for those who have hurt me in my life, which has been a very short one, only 17 years. Well, Rodney, he was a really small stature person. He probably didn't weigh 105 pounds at the most. I'll never forget his face and his eyes. He had the sweetest face and he smiled. I remember he, he smiled a lot. Unfortunately, in the prison, there's a hierarchy or a pecking order. There are those that they call the haves and the have-nots. Rodney would be considered a have-not. I'm very sorry to end my life this way, but if I don't do this, someone will. I'm saying I'd rather die of my own free will than be killed. That's why I must do this. If I remember correctly, this trash can, we have caught it. Right here. It was. Yeah. It might have been right there, but I think it's been moved. It has been. I think been. it was a little right closer there. up. I mean, we had flames come out of the trash can that got, I would say, at least 10, 15 feet high from different chemicals poured in and it's lighting it. You know, it barely been burnt. It matter of minutes they had it out. But it's the fact of what little things you can do that can still have you put to prison. You know, misdemeanor arson, where did it get us? You know, it was funny the time being, but where did it get him today? I mean, it's just hard to sit here and look at this and you realize this is probably one of the last spots I actually seen him at was in that yard. A kid like that shouldn't have been in prison, but because of the judicial system, we're sending a lot of young, troubled kids to the joint because they don't know what else to do with them. The classification system, if it had been running appropriately, should have kept him out of a cell or out of an environment where a guy was sodomizing him. I think he was desperate and unfortunately in this case there were people in, the, in this department I was in that were less than professional to say the least. The psychologist said he's just another fucking inmate and I, I rebuttaled I said but he's being raped and they're beating him and he said he probably likes it. Frankly, in my own experience, uh, it, it has almost never happened that we came up and verified that the offense did take place, or if the offense, uh, or if there was some sexual activity, there wasn't some consensual agreement involved. Now, I'm not saying that rape doesn't take place in the penitentiary because it does. You know, you can see this pattern in some of the investigations that express this disbelief that a guy who did not want to have anal sex could be the victim of a rape. You know, that somehow, if it happened, it was because the guy wanted it. State Grievance, 12 I have been sexually and physically assaulted several times by several inmates. I'm afraid to go to sleep, to shower, and just about everything else. I'm afraid that when I'm doing these things, I may die in any minute. Please, sir, help me. You were seen by the Unit Classification Committee on December 18, 1995, and your request for protection was denied unanimously. Unless you have new information to support your case for protection, your grievance is denied. 11396. I fear that my life is in danger. I've been threatened, jumped, and nearly stabbed many of times. 
I request to be placed on protective custody. You have been reviewed twice by the Unit Classification Committee. Both times your request for protection was denied. Unless you have information to present, your request is still denied. I called the ward. They asked the ward what was going on. What was he doing about it? And he wasn't doing nothing. He told me, he even told Rodney, learn to grow up. You're just a little boy. Learn to grow up. This happens every day. Learn how to deal with it. It's no big deal. And I've been told that so many times. Even when I would ask him, I said, I'm trying really, really hard to get you some help. Can you hang on? He'd say, I'll, I'll try. I'll try real hard. P.S. I love you all. I wish I could be with you all. Spiritually, I am. Signed, Rodney Hewlin. I love you, Mom and Dad.